What's going on guys? We have some more Minnesota Vikings franchise. Two 9-4 teams squaring off. And the Rams actually did us a favor last week in beating the Detroit Lions as they are chasing us in the NFC North race. We'll check out the stats from the last game. And Graham Harrell got some playing time, but Bradford will play. And Denario Alexander, good game receiving. Ben Lieber leading the team in tackles, an ex-Viking. And on the injury report, they have Joey Porter and Mike Sims Walker. So those are two big misses for them. And then for the Giants, I was wondering about Eli Manning, but he is not on the list, so he appears to be okay. And here are the season statistics for the Rams. Steven Jackson kind of having a down year, and Stephon Taylor leading the league in fumbles along with Christian Ponder. Mark Clayton doing the bulk of the receiving for the Rams, and James Laurinaitis playing tremendously well with 119 tackles up to this point, and Robert Quinn with 9 sacks. And so I wanted to check out Stefan Taylor's carrying rating, and it's 58. That means that you're better off handing the ball to Joey Porter and expecting him to hold on to it. If you can scroll down here, we'll see guys with even better carrying ratings than Stefan Taylor. Sam Bradford, he's less likely to fumble, so... I thought that was pretty crazy, but here we go. It is no longer the Edward Jones Dome. We are going to the nicely fitted menswear dome. I'm not a big fan of the name, but here we go. We got a football game to play. Christian Ponder out of the gun, third and seven. And he's going to drop back and just let Noel Devine run to the spot. And he catches the ball, gets into Ram territory. Devine providing a spark that we needed since losing Percy Harvin. And now on second and four, that's James Laurinaitis, the Minnesota native of YZ High School. Sacks Ponder, puts him back for third and 12. And Ponder looking right side, Michael Jenkins. Just turns around a perfect ball right to Jenkins he catches the ball that's a first down big conversion and now third and six ponder over the middle Devin Aroma should do with the catch playing some slot receiver I'm liking the way he's been playing as of late and now third and 13 ponder to pass to the end zone looking for Devine and it's picked off by Ronald Bartell I should not have thrown that pass. I was anticipating a little bit more of separation when he broke off of his route. But anyway, Steven Jackson now carrying the ball. And he's a running back that I really, really think is a great running back that is just playing on a poor team. I love the way he runs. And there he goes, catching the pass. First down, 14 yards. And now they almost find themselves at midfield. Bradford back to pass. Good protection from that offensive line. And Steven Jackson trying to be the one-man band on the field as he's moving him down marching him into Minnesota territory and now third and five Bradford back to pass more terrific protection and he's eventually going to throw it to a receiver and it's picked off by our second round pick Jamel Fleming out of Oklahoma and we'll skip ahead now to the beginning of the second quarter and Adrian Peterson takes the carry that's going to get us into Rams territory and now the fresh set of downs ponder play action and he is sacked by Ben Lieber, the ex-Minnesota Viking, getting a shot in on his old team. Now second and 19 for Ponder. He's going to drop back, look over the middle for Shanko, just overthrown. Shanko had some separation, so I'll bring up an unlikely third and 19 down. And Ponder back to pass the right sideline. Plaxico Burris, great catch. And that is a fantastic play. 39 yards, getting us into field goal range. And Ponder back to pass pumps. And then he finds Noel Devine. Can't let a linebacker cover Devine. That is not going to work. Gets us to first and goal, and we would score a touchdown. So now down by seven points, Bradford and the Rams back on the attack, and he's launching a beautiful deep pass. Caught by Denario Alexander. That was some incredible arm strength. And Denario goes up, catches the pass. As you guys know, I don't use her pick against the computer. And now Lance Kendricks, touchdown in the end zone. But wait a minute. Why is this even being debated? No good? You guys are going to come on and kick the field goal? Why aren't you throwing the challenge play? Look at this. If this ain't a touchdown, I'm not sure that I've ever seen one. Here we see Kendricks with the ball. Ball's coming at him. He catches it. That's uh, a touchdown right there. That's pretty blown, and they didn't call a challenge. I'll take it. Ponder back to pass later, and he's hit as he throws. Picked up by Justin Bannon on the fumble, and the Rams take over. Not more of this. We saw this enough last game against the Colts. Now first and ten, Ponder gives it to Adrian Peterson in the second half. 
first play for us, and Peterson going up the right sideline, plenty of green in front of him, outrunning the Rams defense, 85 yards for the score. Adrian Peterson gives us the lead once again, 14-10, but Bradford and the Rams not to be silenced yet. Looking deep on the right sideline, Mark Clayton, that's a great play. Get behind Sean Jones a little bit and make that fantastic catch. But now he got third and five, and Bradford back to pass. He's going to look deep once again for Clayton, and he makes the catch. And they're going to rule him out of bounds. This one's going to need another look. And St. Louis is going to throw the challenge flag this time. Here you can see the pass coming down. Catches the ball. And it looks like he got two feet in bounds. Not sure if that right foot hit the white line. But the referee comes out to make his ruling and overturns the call. Touchdown St. Louis. And they would have the ball later in the third quarter. And Jackson takes a handoff and he gets him a first down. And then we go to 2nd and 10, Bradford to pass to Steven Jackson, getting plenty of touches in this game. One of their best offensive players, you want to feed him the ball. And they give it now to Stefan Taylor, he holds on to the ball, and he gets him a first down. So maybe I shouldn't have made fun of him earlier, because now he's doing some damage to us. 1st and 10, and he finds Lance Kendricks, the tight end out of Wisconsin for 15 yards. And that'll set him up third and eight, looking to add on to this lead. And Bradford finds Alexander underneath, but Greenway wraps him up. And they would have to attempt a field goal. And Minnesota struggling on offense, so the Rams have the ball shortly after. Bradford to pass on third and one, and he finds his fullback coming out of the backfield. And that's going to be enough for a Rams first down. He was in bounds, so this drive keeps moving. And Antoine Barnes quickly takes down Bradford, so we push him back a little bit. They work it back to third and seven, and Bradford back to pass. He finds Lance Kendricks. Not enough for a first down, but they're going to send out Josh Brown to kick the long field goal anyway. It's up, and it is good. 57 yards. What a kick from Josh Brown. So they have a two-score lead now. Ponder to pass third and seven, and just... Terrific coverage by the St. Louis Rams. I was looking to one of my tight ends on that play, and I had to roll out, and Justin Bannon caught me from behind, playing like a man possessed. And now Steven Jackson takes a handoff, and he is doing what he does best, running between the tackles, getting the Rams another first down, moving the chains. We're in the fourth quarter, so we got to get a stop. But Jackson gets the handoff, and our run defense has just been exposed these past few games. Maybe this run defense isn't as good as I thought they were. Now first and ten, Bradford back to pass. Great protection, by the way. And Mark Clayton. How many plays is this guy going to make? Back of the end zone. He's saying he caught it, of course, but the referee says he didn't. Let's take a look. Clayton catches the ball, and it looks like he's going to fall in bounds right there perfectly, but Jamel Fleming causes an animation that moves his feet, and he only gets one foot down in bounds. So, I don't know what you want to call that. I think that Clayton got screwed out of a touchdown, but he's going to come back, make a catch anyways. This one is in bounds, puts him over 100 yards, gets another first down, and now Steven Jackson, plenty of running room. He's going to take that all day inside of the 10-yard line. Now, we'll go to third and goal. Bradford's going to throw, and he finds Lance Kendricks, and him, Mark Clayton, and Steven Jackson have tore up this defense. We're only down by two scores, trying to make a comeback. Ponder finds Carl Rudolph. Haven't shown any of us playing offense in a while because it, it was just shut down. But we'll go to third and ten now. Ponder looking right for Plaxico Burris. Hit as he was about to catch the ball, and he cannot hang on. So it is fourth down, and we are going to go for it. And my first read, Shanko, definitely not open, looking for Burris. He should have been running that curl. I'm not sure what he was doing running that streak. But anyways, it's a turnover on downs, and Bradford's going to give it to Steven Jackson on third and eight and untouched into the end zone. You cannot let that happen. And now we're back on offense. Not giving up. There's a Roma should do with a catch and a spin move, getting us into St. Louis territory. But unless we have a miracle coming up, we are not going to win this game. And Ponder looking over the middle. And James Laurinaitis is going to be the icing on the cake for the Rams as they get the interception. And this game is over. 36-14. to Bradford played well. Ponder not so much, but the defense played well for the St. Louis Rams. AP had good numbers, but remember that 85-yard touchdown run really messes up the statistics. Steven Jackson, I thought, played a great game today on defense. You don't want your safety being the leader in tackles. 
especially when we don't play with our safeties up on the line that much. And we'll check out Ben Lieber had two sacks. Justin Bannon had three. Fleming did come up with another interception, but sadly we only had 14 points. Lost the game. We'll see the standings here. And every AFC division has a winner as of now, whereas in the NFC, nobody's even clinched a playoff spot. It's so close. So we'll check out the individual divisions now. The NFC North, we're still in front, but the Lions, one game behind, and they own a tiebreaker. So we have to watch out for them with only two games remaining in this season. In the South, the Saints and the Buccaneers neck and neck. Eagles and Giants, it's still a race. And the Cardinals and Rams, both with double-digit wins. This is not the old NFC West, folks. These guys have come to play. So we have got to get it together. That is back-to-back -to -back losses to good teams. And the Detroit Lions beat Jacksonville last week, and Gabbert played pretty awful. And you'll see Stafford keeps getting hurt. You'll go down to Sean Hill, and he's injured now. I don't even know who Quinn Sharp is, but seriously, Stafford, you got to stay on the field. I mean, Landry Jones out for the year as well. But anyways, guys, we play the Chicago Bears next week. They're a three-win team. we got to get that victory. It's a very important game. And as usual, here are a couple videos for you guys to check out. On top, we have Week 14 against the Indianapolis Colts, the last episode in this franchise. And on the bottom, we have WWE 12 with created superstar Tank Tucker and his first match against Zack Ryder as well. And that's a pretty sweet video. It's gotten a good response so far from you guys. So I will see you guys in the next episode of the Minnesota Vikings franchise when we take on the Chicago Bears.